I've done over seven figures selling t-shirts alone, and today I'm breaking down the exact process that I use to come up with and create best-selling designs. I'm going to show you how to come up with ideas and inspiration, check the trademarks painlessly, and literally how I assemble the designs. This design tutorial will show you how to make upwards of 50 designs in just a couple of hours completely for free, and it's probably not a method that you're thinking. To do this method, you'll need two things, a computer with an internet connection and a free Figma account. You can use Figma in your web browser or download it to your computer, and it doesn't matter which one you use because they're both free. Figma is going to be the alternative we use instead of Canva or Placeit if you're familiar with those platforms. I'm giving you this t-shirt design file that you can use completely free with Figma. Go ahead and sign up for Figma and download my t-shirt design file from the description, and then literally just drag it and drop it into a new Figma board. And once you do this, make sure that you click the little lock icon so that it doesn't move around when we're designing. With that done, we can begin the process from the literal beginning with the niche research. Research. Then we'll get into getting inspiration, doing the painless trademark checks, and all of the designing and automation. If you make one design in Canva, it's probably not going to sell. You need dozens of attempts to find the best selling designs, and in this tutorial, you're going to have more designs than you'll know what to do with. The thing about niches that nobody's going to tell you is no matter how big or small the niche is, you can make money from it. So we're going to create designs for every single niche that we can think of, and it's not nearly as much work as it sounds like. I go to Google and start by asking it for a list of professions. You could do the same search for sports, hobbies, foods, or any other interest. We just need to take one of these ideas and plug it into the search engine that we're planning to sell on. So in this example, I think we're going to make shirts for bakers. Since I'm currently growing a store from zero to $100,000 on Etsy, we're going to use this platform, but this works on any print-on-demand website. So we just plug in our idea in the Etsy search and see what results come up. Now, there are a lot of great designs here, but the first thing that I actually notice is that there's only about 11,000 results. The next Next thing I know is that because this is the first page of search results, these are the best selling designs and products, and specifically the top couple rows, except for the very first row, which is full of the Etsy ads. At a glance, we can see things like the amount of reviews that a shop has gotten, and if the product is a best seller at the moment. Now to make things super easy for us, we're just going to screenshot the best selling designs and the designs we really like. So on a Mac, you just click the shift command and number four key, and it will bring up this little screenshot tool, and you just click and drag over the area you want to to screenshot. It will bring up a little screenshot in the corner, and what you do is just drag it and drop it right into your Figma board. And from here, we can just scale it up so it's a little easier to see. And I'll just repeat these steps with all the designs that I'm planning on making that day. Now, if we click through to a specific shirt, we can also see key metrics like how many reviews a specific item has. For example, this item has 54 reviews, and in my experience, I usually get about 10 orders per one review, so this item might have sold hundreds of times. Now, to to begin designing with all of our screenshots in Figma, we're only going to extract successful elements. So instead of just copying the saying or one design element, we're going to look at all of the elements that make a design successful and see what we can learn. These elements can include the fonts, the colors, the formatting, the sayings, and the text effects. I'm going to make several designs in this video, but not dozens. So just remember, quantity over quality will always produce quality in the long run. Now if a shirt has sold, there's something we can learn from it. For example, we could look at what side the text is aligned to, what the font is, how many words per line, what font combinations they're using, what colors they're using, if the text is distressed or not, and if they're using graphics or not. Now, before I even make a design, I like starting with the fonts. Now, to find similar fonts to these, I'm just going to head over to Google Fonts. Again, at right below the subscribe button, I'll have links to all of these websites. But in Google Fonts, we could filter the categories by things like handwriting and display fonts and find all of the best sellers right in here. You can even type in your own design if you want to see what it looks like with a particular font. And all of these are completely commercial free, so you can download them and use them on your shirt designs. When you find a font that you like, you'll just click download the family, open up the folder that it downloads and just double click on the font name and it'll bring up your font book and you can just click install. We're basically just looking for similar fonts to the ones that successful listings use and I'll put more resources for fonts in the description. We don't have to buy any fonts to make successful designs, but if we're going to, I would look to buy fonts on Creative Market because you're going to get the best value for your money. But I've just organized a lot of the 
the best selling fonts right here so you can look them up and download them for yourself. But to avoid any legal trouble now and down the line, before we begin designing our own shirts, I can't stress enough how important it is to not copy anyone directly. We're only using inspiration and looking at the successful designs to sample small elements of them to create our own original designs. We can't copy anyone, otherwise we'll run into legal trouble and it's super unethical as it is. Now, since the sayings are a big element of the shirt design, we're going to check the trademarks on them even though we're going to be creating our own variations. I'll have a link to this official website down below, but we're going to start our search off by just choosing the basic word mark search, changing this setting to live, and now we can type in the shirt design. From here, we can just click submit query and you can see that there were no records found. But the important thing here is we also want to check just the tail end of the design. So remove the word baking and we're just going to search the tail end. So we'll just come back and we will erase the beginning part and we're going to search for the tail end of the design and hit submit query. Now this will show us if there's any other designs that are similar that have been trademarked. But we're gonna take this a step further and rework the design just a little bit more. So to literally start making the designs back in Figma, I think I'm gonna start with this font and we're gonna make a variation of this Baking Queen shirt. So I'm gonna come over to my uh, template right here that I use to size all of my designs. I'm just going to click the T key or or you can choose this little text box option and I'm just going to click and then we can start typing in our design. And so instead of queen, I think we're gonna type in master. So like a baking master shirt. From here, we can just scale this design up. And the reason why you wanna use this template is because inside this red box right here that you see, this is about 12 inches. And so that's pretty much what I found to be the perfect printing size for t-shirt designs. And honestly, I think that looks pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is just move over here a little bit and I'm just going to hold the option key and I'm going to drag it to the side. And now we have a copy. And now we can go ahead and make another variation of the same t-shirt. So for example, if we wanted to use this font right here, we could just copy the font name and paste it right in here. And it'll just change the font. Now we'll have to adjust some of the settings. Click right here and we can change it to all caps. And maybe we don't want the lines to be so far apart. So we can just change the line height and we can again hit the K key so we can scale it up. And I think that looks really good. So we can put that over here and maybe we wanna make even another variation. So we want to make one for men. So maybe we'll say this one is the baking master, okay? And we wanna do a manly kind of font. So maybe we'll do this font right here choose impact and right here we can just paste in the name of the font impact and this is a little too close together so we want to adjust the line height and maybe right here we can scale this one down okay perfect so now we have the baking master shirt the key about doing this is to use little details of inspiration from other designs so in this example i use the typewriter font called special elite because this was a best-selling shirt with typewriter font and then this one says it's a great day to make cookies. So I just made my own variation that says it's always a good day for baking. You can see how we're sampling different elements to make completely original designs. Okay, so this one, it's instead of saying baking is my therapy, I'm gonna say baking, it's my therapy. Now, when it comes to having designs with multiple text layers, or if this is gonna be a different font, you'll see over here on the side that they're actually two separate layers. And to fix this, all we're gonna do is just click and drag over both of them and hit command G and now they're grouped together. And so Figma is reading it as one design file. So this saying is I'm just here for the food and how could we change that and make our own original design? Let's do it dancing script. And let's say something like I only came for the baking. Okay, again, because right now we're just targeting that baking idea group. And then we can make a different variation of this. This one could say, I came for the baking. And then again, we can change the font to something like this. We can make it great. That looks great. Let's scale it up a little bit. And then even simple designs like this, that just say cookies, sell super well. So if we wanted to make something in our own niche, we could choose maybe this font right here. And we could just say, you know, baker okay and then we can scale this up because people 
will buy this kind of design. I know it seems counterintuitive and a lot of people think you need all these graphics and extra elements, but simple designs sell. Let's do one more design. So maybe we'll use this font, Pro Baker. Okay, so, so now we've done a bunch of different designs and yes, they are all simple text designs, but here's how we can spice things up a little bit. And while I'm designing it just to save time, I try and format it in a style that I think is going to look good. So if this one's going to look better justified to the left, then I can just justify it to the left and so on and so forth. But if you can do that as you're designing, it's just gonna save you a lot of time. Another thing to keep in mind here is that since we're not copying designs directly, we can sample elements from other best-selling designs. So this one was not from the baking search, but it's a best-selling design and it's just from the food niche. Now with our somewhat complete designs and our original sayings, we can add more details like colors and effects. So to add color to a design, all we have to do is choose the design and press the I key on our keyboard and then it'll give us this eyedropper tool and we could select a color that we like and it'll just change the design to that color. Adding things like color can just add another layer of protection and help your designs stand out from someone else's. We could also do something like making a design distressed. So if we wanted to make this design distressed, all we would have to do is download one of these distressed overlays and just make sure that it's right below our text design. So make sure that it's below it and then we can drag our text right on top. And if we click and select both layers and click this middle button up here, it will mask it. And now we've got a distressed design. If you wanna add graphics or things like overlays to Figma, you can add them from anywhere on the web from places like Freepik, Creative Market, Envato Elements or wherever you want. Then you'll literally just drag it and drop it into Figma. But I would highly encourage you to just start with simple text designs. Now, what I'm about to tell you is literally what grew my store past seven figures. It's really a good idea to create a lot of variations like this because you just don't know what's going to sell. You just never know what style someone's looking for and what fonts or colors they'd like. Now we've got a lot of finished designs, but here's where Figma gets really powerful. What we wanna do is come right up here to the page section and click this little drop down, and we're gonna rename this first page to template. Then what we need to do is click on this plus page and it's just going to add a second page and we can just go back to the templates for now. What we wanna do is select all of our designs and right click and just hit copy or just press command C. Then we can come back into our second page and just command V to paste them in. Now we've got a copy of all of our designs. Now this is really important to understand. What we need to do is hit Command F on our keyboard and it's going to bring up this find window in the top left. From here, we wanna click on the settings and check replace. Now we can find all of the baking shirts and instantly replace them to a different design. For example, we can find the baking shirts and we could replace all of them with surfing. And if we just hit replace all, you can see that we've essentially immediately created 10 brand new designs. We could do this again and we could copy all of these designs, make a new page, paste them in, and this time we're just changing the surfing shirts to cooking. And we just hit replace all and you can see immediately we have cooking shirts. Now sometimes you're gonna have to come and fix designs like these, but hopefully you can see the point here. We already know that these formats sell really well for baking shirts, so there's no reason why you couldn't take the same templates and turn them into cooking or surfing or any other idea. This is a huge time saver, and let me explain why it works so well. For every single template that you create, you're essentially creating hundreds of future designs. If you went back to step one and started putting those interest groups into this template format, even with these designs that I've made right here in this video, you'd almost immediately come up with hundreds of designs. The key to all of this is making great design templates, which only comes with practice. The more design templates you make, the better you get. And each time you make a great design template, you're increasing your future sales like almost exponentially. But if you actually plan on taking this serious and wanna grow this past the six and seven figure mark, here are some bonus tips. Designs like this are good, but we can't use them as sayings templates because the ideas like surfing don't make sense. Graphics will also really slow you down. A lot of the times you can't reuse them in your templates because they just don't make sense. And they're not required at all to reach the seven figure mark, but you can add them in later if you feel like you need them. The other reason why this template method is so useful is because when we go to make baking shirts, we only have to get title and tags once instead of trying to get 10 different title and tags for 10 different 
different ideas. You can select all of the baking shirts and make sure they're in the right color and export them using this feature right down here. And you can export them to almost any format that you'll need. Here's another pro tip. If you're selling a white design on a colored t-shirt, a lot of the times the t-shirt color will show through the design if they're only using one layer of ink. So here's a trick to get two layers of ink when they're printing it. When you select all of your designs, and you're changing the black color to white, instead of just choosing solid white, set the color code to F-E-F-E-F-B, and this will set it to a very slight off-white. But this is almost indistinguishable once it's printed from pure white, and the designs will last twice as long, and this will prevent things like cracking. Next, if you're trying to sell in a super competitive niche with hundreds of thousands of competitors, see if you can double target a niche. Right now, this Valentine's Day shirt search brings up 660,000 results. But if we search for Valentine's Day taco shirt, you can see there's only 2,500 results. And if you think that a niche this small isn't going to bring in sales, here's a t-shirt that's using this exact strategy and they have about 13 reviews, which I know isn't that crazy. But at the same rate of one review per 10 orders, this shirt's probably sold quite a few times and it's a fairly simple design. They're targeting people who like tacos and Valentine's Day and hopefully you can see how you could use this shirt, you could replace it with any other food, and you could replace the holiday as well. All you'd have to do is come up with a little bit of a different saying, and you could use very similar fonts, very simple graphic, and by doing that, you would have created hundreds of design templates. Using Figma will also allow you to take advantage of my Photoshop auto-generating mock-up scripts and my Printify uploader program once I release them. Which means if you're using this design template and really applying the strategy, you'll be able to upload start to finish about 30 designs in under an hour. Share, like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.